Underway in Purcell, and it will be Wake Forest ball to start it off. This is the poise that I think has allowed Wake Forest to slowly separate themselves. Of course, as we look at standings, we got to consider postponements and cancellations there, but that is a big time basket from Jewel Spear. They, you know, at points this season, they, they haven't necessarily dealt with pressure that much, but for the most part, Coach Ivy did share with us that we'll see a significant amount of zone from Notre Dame. Rotsa and Conti, by the way, played over 100 games for in a Wake Forest jersey, so a couple experienced players there. Strong drive to the basket for Michaela Vaughn. The speed that, I mean, she has great size and great presence. She's not super flashy, but she's a smart basketball player. There's Rotsa again trying baseline. That will go offensive board, put back up and in. Vaughn, hands, active hands in the right position. That was a great defensive play. Mabry pulls a Rondo out, almost converts, <laughs> but can't, and the putback is there. That three is no good, and a good rebound for Anaya Peoples. Peoples takes it the whole way. Abby Prohaska up the floor quickly, does not have numbers, and pulls it back. Gives it to Mabry, transition three, yes. Rotsa with the offensive rebound. Strong move, puts it back up with a lot of contact there too. Takes a second to survey what the what is being offered to her and then she makes a decisive and relatively quick decision. First points in about three minutes, 45 seconds as Westbelt gets her own rebound and puts it in. Not on purpose. <laughs> Leads the team in rebounds, points, and one of the best freshmen in the country as we said as that goes in. So, you know, she's another one that can set those screens, pick and pop, just like Westbelt. Destiny Walker, the super sub, puts it in there. Great weak side back uh, rebound and block out by Prohaska. Two on one, and Mabry finishes it off, going coast to coast. It's a much more difficult day at the office to set up in your half-court set versus looking to attack and transition and beating your opponent down the floor. Pass down low to Mora, finishes it off. Uh, it looks like the Demon Deacons back to that man defense. Let's see if. Okay. Did she call glass, Sam? I don't know if Destiny Walker called glass. Hey, you can you can hear everything, good or bad. You can hear it all. I think that was supposed to be a pass from Vaughn, but gets the rebound technically and puts it in. <laughs> a couple of lucky shots going in for Notre Dame now. Vegas got to look to get some movement. They're kind of stagnant. Gina Conti for three. Yes. The senior knocks it down. Wake Forest to tie this thing up. I mean, they are certainly a solid three-point shooting team. And that's Rata. See, that's the passing that Rata is capable of doing from that spot. What is this? A two? It's more sort of a one. Ooh, no. Two, three. It's like a it's one, one, three. three yeah, I don't know if I. Yeah. Hmm. Pretty automatic in terms of execution. So Rata and Westbrook off pass. a little bit of a, a slower start. Westbelt, yes, gets the away roll there. And Maddie Westbelt is just so poised. She spun around, it was actually a little bit before that. She spun around to get Rata on the top side, and then she cashes in. Tuning at the easy high percentage shot. Rata tough to the basket, yes. I used to have a coach that used to say, be selfish in a team way. Which would translate in this instance, Ratza is a part of, is one of what I would call the head of the snake for this Wake Forest squad, and she needed to get going. And so I think those last two baskets. Five on the shot clock, Burnell down low to Peoples, turns to the basket and gets it to go. Ratza is off the floor though as well, so this is gonna be an interesting window of time for the Demon Deacons. Olivia Sumiel. Good ball movement around the perimeter there to find Scruggs for three, but just haven't been able to really find some offensive rhythm yet. Walker for three now, yes. <laughs> Destiny Walker. Wake Forest just a, a beat ahead of themselves. Uh, Scruggs made a, a good cut. I'm not sure what she was gonna do once she got the ball there. And you saw Roxa come right in and look for a scoring opportunity, hoping to end that drought and unable to connect. Over the top to Westbelt, that's good. Maddie Westbelt, six points now. That's it, Conti though, a dribbling into that zone just a bit. Rotsa fighting through defenders. That ends a bit of a drought there. Simply gotta put the ball in the basket. They've gotta get more movement in that half court set as the Notre Dame zone really seemed to stifle them in the first half. Christina Mora, the and one, count it for Christina Mora. 
or another one of her teammates maybe should have made themselves available. Offensive rebound rolls to Mickey Vaughn. Had a nice lane to the hoop. The coach Ivy is on them about being cognizant um, and staying focused through the duration of the ball game. Conti from the top of the key nails it. Gina Conti now six points. Trying to push quickly. Conti, yes. A little scoop and score there. They just did not have any movement on the offensive side of the ball. And there you see some good offensive movement with Scruggs penetrating and kicking there. So job well done. Down to Matty Westbell. That was a little bit too easy, it felt like. 11 turnovers for Wake Forest. Walker pulls up in the lane. No good. Scruggs gets the rebound and pushes. In the open floor, and Spear puts it in. Depending on the spots that the ball ends up in, it's not necessarily about a turnover, but it is about eating up away the shot. Shot blocked by Laura and out of bounds. Ten on the shot clock for Abby Prohaska. Down low to Westfeld, fakes once, goes up and converts. Maddie Westfeld on a bit of a roll now, Monica. Her game team that doesn't have a true point guard, and she said mm -hmm. that Dara Mabry has kind of taken over that role, which has changed a little bit, but when you have players like Westbeld and all these players that can make threes, that helps a lot. So does the offensive rebounding there for Prohaska. It was a clean look by Westbeld. You don't make every single shot, and so that's totally fine. But to your point, Sam, that's why as this game began, we talked about at any given time, Notre Dame can have four players that can start their break in transition. Gina Conti quickly into double figures now in the second half. Three for five from long range. Let's have... Literally, it's like picking cherries or something. Uh, they just have all this vision and time to decipher the defense and make a great pass. Good pass down low to Ratza. Ratza coming off back to back. Double doubles. And the reigning Wake ACC player switched. of the week. Wake has also Ooh. switched to a man. Bigs have to screen screens, defend screens that they haven't necessarily had a ton of reps defending. Turned over. Westbeld in the open floor to Walker, and that's good. An 11 point lead for the Fighting Irish now. See the points in the paint discrepancy there. There's another one, another two. Room for them to run into one another, count the basket. It's just amazing to me, the, the wherewithal and the basketball IQ from a freshman for Notre Dame, and there's a three from Sam Brunel. Who's ever seen come into the college game prepared the way that she has? Yeah, and, and I asked her about that specifically. It, it, when you talk about her physical gifts, I also would like to say for folks listening at home, if you hear some growling, that's not me. It's my animal. <laughs> my dog, Hoops, who's a little too close to the mic. <laughs> well, Hoops is going to like the way that Conti's playing this afternoon. Yeah. It's so much fun. I'm glad you enjoyed tuning in, Sam, but I enjoy being there even more. <laughs> well, I'd imagine so. You guys have a ton of fun for Alaska. <laughs> And Notre Dame are having fun here, Monica, to start this fourth quarter. An opportunity for Notre Dame to learn how to finish out a game completely. Having been in the driver's seat much of the game, as you see Mabry getting the easy two there. In the fourth quarter, we'll get that scoreboard back up for you momentarily here. <laughs> Offensive board falls in the hands of Livia Sumiel, and she finishes there. And defensively for Wake Forest, it's been kind of a, an up and down game, I think they have struggled to find pressure in the paint for Haska. A couple of points to start off this fourth quarter for Abby Prohaska. Yeah, fast break points for, the fast break points for Notre Dame are only nine. Um, turnovers, of course, 14 now for Wake Forest. In fact, I'm gonna go to uh, the free throws as a measure of that. And since Notre Dame has only shot two free throws, I'm just not, I'm gonna say that the defense has not been very intense. Prohaska from the baseline, Abby Prohaska on fire. Conti's three. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me, Gina Conti yeah. this afternoon? 18 now. Westbell at the buzzer. It's like a magnet for her at the buzzer. You wanted to hang around 10, but ultimately you wanted to cut into the 10. And right now, sitting at 13, the weight continues to kind of move side to side. 
Six on the shot clock. Prohaska tries to feed it to Vaughn, stolen away. Olivia Samel, that's the that's the physicality you were talking about, right? Like she didn't just let. I can't remember who was cutting cut. Brooks got to communicate about this screening action. Westbell pop for three. Great pop. That's a that, that's just a great read by Westbell. Westbell two threes on the afternoon now. Twenty two points. Conti hesitated a bit, but still drains the three. West Gina Conti records. The baseline kicks it out. Kaya Harrison, her first point of the game. Um, I, you set a ball screen for her and let her work, or you're trying to get uh, Ivana Rotzel or Jewel, is Jewel Spear on the floor? Yeah, trying to get Spear loose. Oh, okay, there it is. <laughs> Person uh, that I was wanting to get the basketball. Wow, Stolen away. Conti in the open floor, in for two. Wake Forest trails by three with 30 seconds left to go. I think you do have to give some props to Coach Hoover and her team for the way that they played in the second half. Yeah, but you know, coaches certainly don't want more victories and they certainly don't show up in the win-loss column. And so.